In this video, we're going to cover machining a 2D part. Now, the part that we're going to use for this is the part that we created in the 2D drawing lesson. So if you're going to follow along with this, what you should do is make sure you've either saved the file or that you have the file, so go through and do the 2D drawing lesson to complete the file. Now we'll go ahead and go to File, Open. In this case, I saved the file to my desktop. Go ahead and open the file. Now, whether you created this part in another drawing system or within Bobcad, you do the same thing to go open the file. There's a couple things that we need to set up as soon as we open up the file. Even if you use another drawing system, you'll still need to be able to do the basics in Bobcad, which are draw out some basic shapes and move the part around the screen. So now the first thing to look at is our stock. We need to decide what size stock we're cutting this out of. And what we'll do is we'll draw our stock in on the screen so that we can select it for our stock and easily move the part around. So we'll come to Other, Rectangle, and we're going to say we're going to take this out of a rectangular piece of stock. Now my part has a 3 inch radius, so I know that this part is going to be 6 inches wide. Let's say we'll take this out of a 7 by 7 inch piece of material. We'll say it has sharp corners. We'll enter its origin based off the center X, Y, and Z, 0, because that's where our part's drawn in this instance. Say OK, and then cancel. Now that we have the stock drawn, what our next concern is, is where the part's going to be zeroed when being cut. So, what we want to do is move the part over to where the, it will be zeroed on the screen. Here we can see that the crosshairs where they meet is where X and Y zero are. Let's go ahead and move our part from the bottom corner over to zero and we'll call this our zero on the part. To do this we'll go to utilities, translate. Now when you use any of the utilities commands like translate or rotate, what you have to do is go to the command select all of the geometry that you want to move and then when you're done selecting geometry right click and left click OK to confirm your selection and then go fill out the information in the dialog box now let's say we're going to use sketch and enter we're going to pick our start point and enter our end point so we have pick chosen for start and enter set X Y and Z 0 so we'll go pick our start location so we're going to move from here to 0 We'll go ahead and cancel this command. Now we'll come up here and we have our View All button. I'm going to move this toolbar over. There's our View All button. Now we've moved the part to where we're going to zero it when machining it. And we've drawn our stock. Now let's go ahead and get rid of the dimensions that are on the screen so that we're only dealing with the part. We'll just simplify the drawing a little. To do this, we can either come into our selection mode, pick the dimensions and then delete them, or we can hide them on the screen, which would be our blanking. Let's go to view, blank. We can then pick the dimensions, then right click and left click OK, and that just simply turns them off. Now there's many ways to do that depending if you drew, drew the part on layers, or if you select using one of the selection filters. Um, those things you'll want to go through the help files for or do some training to kind of cover that. Or you can find some other tutorials up on the web that on our website that may cover those items. Let's go ahead and cancel. Now that we have the part set up in reference to zero where we're going to cut it and we've drawn our stock, we're ready to start adding tool paths. To do this we'll come over to the cam tree and here I have my milling stock. Below that we have our material that we're cutting out of. In this case it's set to plastic. Let's say we change that. We'll go to edit. And let's choose aluminum. Say OK. The next item down here is our stock geometry, which is going to be what our stock is. We right click stock geometry, left click reselect, and we'll choose our stock. Now if you want to pick an entire shape instead of just one line, you could do that by holding the shift key while clicking on it. And then right click OK to confirm your selection. 
Now we can see that this part's shaded because this is where the stock is. Now we could right click milling stock and go to edit to set up some of the values. So we have this set to aluminum already. The type is rectangular stock. Cylindrical stock is only for fourth axis purpose. So if you are cutting out a cylinder, you'll still want to use rectangular stock unless you're cutting it on a fourth axis. Our top of stock set to zero. And then we have our thickness of stock. Let's say at this part's one inch. We're going to call the pocket half of an inch deep on this part. And we'll cut the part fully out and we'll drill all the way through it. Rotary axis is only if you're using fourth axis, so we'll leave this alone. Then we have our clearance plane, which is where the tool travels over the material while moving at a rapid. Let's say that we go one eighth of an inch for the clearance plane. Then we could choose our work offset for the machine. In this case, we'll use work offset one. Now the work offset will refer to the work offset codes on your machine. For example, G54 or G55. You'll need to check your machine manual if you don't know how to set those up already. We'll go ahead and choose OK. Now that we've set up our stock and, move, and we've also set up its location, we're ready to add the toolpath. All the toolpaths are accessed in the same manner. We right click milling stock and then we get our drilling, two axis milling, and three axis milling. Now this is a 2D part so we'd use two axis milling. Three axis is for when you need X, Y, and Z all to move at the same time to cut out a 3D part. Let's say that the first thing that we want to do is cut out the pocket. So we'll go to mill two axis, we'll choose pocketing, and we'll click next. Now we get a prompt to select our geometry. Let's go ahead and click on select geometry and we'll pick this rectangle. So what I'll do is I'll hold shift and click on one of the lines around the outside. This highlights the entire shape. Then we'll right click and left click OK. And then it displays our geometry. Choose Next. Now we get a chance again to override the rapid plane that we had just set or the top apart if we had any circumstances that have changed this. When we click in these fields, it'll display what these items do. Now we get the option of whether or not we're going to chamfer to deburr. Let's go ahead and say we're not going to chamfer this. Click Next. We get an opportunity to change our work offset. And if we're going to index this on a fourth axis, we can output a rotary angle here. We'll go to Next. Now for the rough tool, we can select from our tool library. And A half inch tool might be a little big, so let's say that I want to use a different tool, and it's not in my tool library. We can either add it, or we can manually edit all of these values on the fly. Let's say we're not going to use a system tool, so we'll uncheck this. We're going to use a, let's say, one eighth of an inch diameter tool with a zero corner radius. We'll say its flute length is one and a half inches. Number of flutes is two. Its overall length, let's say, is two inches. And we could add a tool description if we want. Now, for the machining data, we can change the tool number. We can pick from a tool. Or we can also set our offset values or override those values. Now, the system feeds and speeds look at the material file that we're using. Now, let's say that we want to change them on the fly. We uncheck Use System Feeds, and we can manually enter all of our feed rates if we haven't set up a material. In this case, let's just say we do use the system feeds. Choose Next. Now, this pattern lets us choose how the toolpath is going to perform. Let's say that we do an offset pocket, and we'll work outward, so we'll start in the center. You could choose to climb or conventional mill. Let's climb mill. And then this cut width percent is our step over. Let's say that we're going to step over 50% the diameter of the tool. 
we'll go to next. Now, side allowance pertains to the finish pass. See in here, there's a rough tool and a finish tool. So if we want to leave room for finish, we'll go ahead and set a value in there. Let's say we're not going to do a finish pass, so we set the side allowance to zero. What this will do is this will give us a zero diameter finish tool, which will mean that we'll only be using one tool to cut. If you want to use both tools, go ahead and enter a side allowance, and then give the finish tool a diameter. In this case, we'll just use the one tool. Our depth, we'll say, is half of an inch, and let's say it will cut that in multiple steps. Let's say one-eighth of an inch per pass. You can set that to be even or individually defined depths. Choose next. We can plunge, ramp, or spiral for the material entry. Let's say that we just plunge. Choose next. Now for the finish tool, since we chose no stock remaining for the finish pass, we'll go ahead and set that diameter to zero. And what that will do is that will cancel out the finish tool. Choose next. Now we could set our system compensation. Whether the software is going to offset the toolpath, or if we're going to use the machine compensation, the G4142 codes. You could use any combination of system compensation here. So let's say we're going to allow the system to compensate or offset the toolpath. Oh, well, you know what, let's leave that off, and let's leave the machine compensation off. We'll just do a centerline toolpath, since this is a pocket. If you want to activate the cutter compensation, you can do so here. Now we'll go ahead and finish. Actually, we'll go to next. And now we can set our leads, but since we're not using a finish pass, we'll go ahead and leave this vertical. Choose finish. The next step is to right-click pocket and compute toolpath. And there's our pocketing toolpath. Now, the steps might seem like a lot, but it's pretty simple. As we continue through these toolpaths, you'll see that the steps are the same. Let's say these drill holes. So pretty much, we always come here, right-click milling stock, pick the type of operation, in this case, drill. Let's say hole. Choose next. Select the geometry, which are these holes. Right-click OK. And we'll choose next. And now we can just go through and fill out all of these settings. Now we have our rapid plane on top of part again, whether or not we use a chamfer. Let's go ahead and say no chamfer. This is a through hole that will help the tools be set up properly. Choose next. Set up our work offset. And we'll set up our tools. In this case, let's say we're going to use a system tool. And let's say that we need an eighth inch diameter tool, so we'll add one. Oh, that's a center drill. Let's go ahead and leave this. Cancel, we'll select the half inch center drill. We'll click next. Now, the drilling depth you can change on the fly if we override this or we can allow the system to calculate this. Those calculations come from the material file. So if you want to know how to change those calculations, you can look at the setting up the material video. We'll choose next. Our drilling, we'll go ahead and go to our tool library and see, now we don't have an eighth inch tool. Let's add one. So we'll add a one eighth diameter tool, the 118 degree point angle, now the material file will automatically calculate how deep to go to clear the hole on through holes based on the point angle. We have our flute length, our overall length, and the tool number. Let's say that this is tool 3, and we'll call this our 1 8 diameter drill. Choose OK. Now we'll select the tool we had just added. Choose next. Our effective depth, let's say, is one inch. And you'll see that the overall depth was just calculated. We can override that here. Our hole diameter was one eighth of an inch. 
and we'll go ahead and use a pecking cycle. And the pecking values are also calculated or can be overridden. Now we'll choose finish. Then right click drill hole and compute toolpath. There's our drilling toolpath. Now it's the same thing for the profile. Right click milling stock, go to mill two axis, profiling. Next, select what's to be cut with the profile or geometry. We'll hold shift and pick the shape, then right click and left click OK. Get a preview of our part, choose next. Set up the rapid plane top of part, choose next. Our work offsets, whether or not if we're outputting line or arc moves if we do contour or ramping. Select our rough tool. Let's say we're going to use tool 9, half inch tool. So let's go add, and let's say we have a quarter inch tool. And let's give it a tool a label of quarter inch tool. Choose OK. Now here's our quarter inch diameter tool. Choose OK. We'll assume the feeds and speeds and tool numbers are good. We'll choose next. We'll do standard profiling. We'll do a left offset with G42. We'll set our side allowance. Let's say we're going to leave 20 thousandths on the side for a finish pass. Say our total depth is 1 inch. And we're going to take that at 1 quarter inch per pass. Say next. We'll plunge. Do a, let's say a circular lead in and lead out with a quarter inch radius. And we'll put a 1 eighth of an inch overlap to get rid of any bar that might be on the side. Our lead out will leave the same. We'll do sharp corners. And for a finish tool, let's say that we're going to use a 1 eighth inch diameter tool. And we'll use a manual tool this time. We just fill out any description that we want. And we'll go to finish. We can right click profile and compute toolpath. Now I can get a preview of the toolpath. I can see it's cutting on the wrong side. And say that we want to change our lead in lead out position to down here. Under feature profile you can see where there's a start point. We can right click on this. We can reverse its direction. And then compute it again. And you'll see that it's now reversed the direction and cuts it on the outside. We could also change our start location. Right click start point. And modify. And then choose a new start location. And right click OK. And compute our toolpath again. Now once the toolpath's been added, we're ready to come in and choose our post processor and post the code. We'll look at that in another video.